a runoff, I can guarantee you that you haven't seen last of him. And we believe he will be part of L.A.'s next generation of movers and shakers. Let's listen in to my interview with Emmanuel Pleitez. The, the sad part is that uh, we, this year we could have gone bankrupt. But what we're doing every year is having to cut a few hundred million dollars from our budget so that we don't go bankrupt. So that, and bankruptcy just means that we don't meet our liabilities. The sad thing is that, is that our politicians that have been in power for over a decade each have made decisions that they have publicly said they regret, have made decisions on numbers that they didn't understand. Now look, I, I'm the only one that's worked on economic and fiscal policy at the highest levels, as well as worked in the private sector and understands what, what is actual job creation. So I'll have a fundamental different approach in that we need to reform the way we think about our budget and specifically our pension system because our pension system continues to be a much bigger part of the budget. And instead of reforming the pension system, what we're doing is because we're afraid to challenge the interests behind that, we're cutting the social safety net of the city. We're cutting public works. We're cutting sanitation, street paving, right? gang intervention programs, things that are impacting especially the hardest hit communities by this economy. And because they have less political power and less lobby power, the politicians at City Hall aren't being as responsive. That's just the fact of the matter. So I want to make sure that I, on day one, am addressing the reform of the pension system, and we can go on details about that, so that then we're looking at not having to cut our social safety net and being able, able to invest in education and training so that we're building the skills and the opportunities of our workforce so that jobs can actually get created. The mayor doesn't create jobs. Any mayoral candidate says I create jobs is naive because they've never been in the private sector and actually created a job. Jobs are created because private enterprises are growing in a functional economy and they can hire from a skilled workforce. As the chief strategy officer of a technology company, we had jobs every single week that stayed open and unfilled because there weren't people that had the skill set to get those jobs. That's what's going on in this economy because there are some jobs available, but we need the capital and we need the workforce so that those businesses and jobs can grow and the workforce that is skilled to get those jobs. I understand and so my focus as mayor will be to, to address pension reform and then have a 24-7 mindset on education and training so that we have more education to employment opportunities for all Angelinos. Numerous seats on the LA City Council came up for grabs this election season, and they were far too numerous for Newswire LA to cover. However, we were among the first to learn that former State Assemblyman Mike Davis was making a run for Jan Perry's 9th District seat. Newswire LA was among the first to get Davis's comments on his run for city council. Here's our Trisha Mitchell. Hi, I'm Trisha Mitchell with Newswire LA, and we're here with Assemblyman Mike Davis as he bids for the LA City 9th District Council seat. Hi, Mike, how are you? Fine, how are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. Tell us, first of all, about Mike Davis and how you're connected. Well, I've been here in Los Angeles since the 1980s and I have been committed to public service and had a passion for public service even in college. Uh, since being here, I've done graduate work here at several universities, but most importantly, I've had a chance to work with some of the greatest leaders, not only in the state of California, but in this country. I started my career as a field representative with Assemblywoman Maxine Waters and worked up to her chief of her Los Angeles office after that, I worked with her as her district director in her congressional seat her first term. And then additionally, I worked with Supervisor Yvonne Burke as her senior deputy uh, uh, county supervisor. And so both of those leaders, uh, both of whom have been outstanding, have given me the kind of experience at three levels of government that I think makes me qualified to continue to serve uh, this area, in particular uh, Los Angeles City Council. And in going for this bid, what is it that you think um, you will change on a local level different than on the state level? Well, I'll first tell you that what is similar in all public service is a passion to improve the quality of life. What will be different is that the assignment to city government 
um, differs in many ways in terms of you're able to often touch and feel constituents closer in terms of public works projects, uh, beautification of the city, transportation, and so that you directly are more involved on an everyday basis as opposed to being away in Sacramento doing big bills or in Washington doing even larger bills. So that would be the difference. It is more uh, hands-on uh, at the city level. Now it has been said that the city of Los Angeles is in a bit of a dire straits in terms of their finances and possibly uh, bankruptcy. What do you think as, as a candidate um, can be done or should be done or will be done once you're in office to rectify that? And we all know that it can't happen overnight, but what, what would you start with? As a legislator, I can tell you firsthand that the state legislature and the state of California hasn't actually uh, easily balanced its very own budget. And all of us know so we are in an era where the economy is in question. And certainly, because the city depends upon both state and federal government, it would too. I think that at the end of the day, the same challenge in the state is the same challenge at the city. Getting revenues. How can we obtain opportunities to get revenues that uh, is fair and that is just? Uh, what kinds of uh, fees, unfortunately? What kind of taxes, unfortunately? Or what other kinds of means can we employ? Or as an administrator, can we execute? Do we have to reduce services in some areas? I would suspect we'd have to do a combination of those. We'd have to reduce, perhaps, in some areas where we can most afford to do so. And then on the other hand, we would have to try to figure out how we can generate more revenues to reinvest back into the services provided by the city. To follow is a breakdown of all of the March 5th races and measures. It's been a wonderful election season here in Los Angeles, but it's not over yet. Now that we've found that the top two candidates did not get 50% plus one, we are on to a May runoff. So Newswire LA will continue its coverage of the mayor's race with more interviews with the top two candidates and more. Stay tuned to Newswire LA for all of your political coverage. That's it from Newswire LA. Thank you for joining us. For everything Newswire LA, look us up on Facebook and Twitter at Newswire LA. I'm Chen Thomas Sanksy, and we'll see you back here next time.
Stay tuned for more news on this Westlake Signal Station.